Hello, welcome to another video. So this is a question on limits and it looks weird at first, but if you pay attention and you just try to put some numbers there, you're going to see that um, there's a pattern that you, you're ex ex establishing, okay? It's just like somebody telling you a story and you go, where are you going with this? Because you already see where this is going to end up, okay? So um, what I want you to do is, why don't we try uh, put some numbers here. Let's say X is starting from 1. What is the first root of 1? Well, I don't know what this means. I, I know it's going to be whatever root of 1 is always 1. So then I'm going to go to the square root of 2. Square root of 2 is 1.4142 there about. Um, what about the cube root of 3? Um, the cube root of 3 sounds like one point maybe four something okay another 1.4 let's say what about the fourth root of four well the fourth root of four is the square root of two so that's another 1.4 um, what about the fifth root of five um, it's gonna be 1.3 something okay this is this is reduced as you keep going you will notice that the number gets smaller so I tried 123rd root of 123 and I found my answer was 1.0 something okay maybe 01 or 09 I can't remember but you notice that as you keep changing these numbers as it gets bigger your answer approaches 1. Now, we don't know if it's going to go below 1, but it looks like this decimal keeps getting smaller, but the 1 is retained. And that gives me an idea by observation that as these numbers get bigger, um, you're going to get something like 1 at the end. So I can um, predict that by the time you approach infinity, you might your answer will be 1. Okay. But you're not going to prove it this way, or you're not going to show it this way. You have to show it mathematically, and not by just making a table, because you, cannot, you can't keep going until you get to just before infinity, which we don't know where that is. Okay, so let's do the math, the algebra of this, apply some rule. In fact, in this video, I'm just going to show you where you can apply L'Hopital's rule, and you can use that to solve this. But remember, this is an indeterminate form, because you have infinity and infinity interacting, and maybe it's too, it's, it's weird, okay. So let's rewrite this expression and see how it goes. Like I've said in other videos, whenever you see x approaching infinity, you must start thinking of how to make fractions out of whatever you have. Every time x goes to infinity, a fraction will always save you, okay? Unless it's so obvious. But right now it's not obvious. So whenever it's not obvious what's going to happen as you go toward infinity, it's always good to make fractions. So the first thing you want to do is rewrite this expression not as a radical but as an exponential function. Okay, so let's look at this. We can say this is the same thing as the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the 1 over x. That's another way to write this. Okay, remember that if you write x, this, the cube root of x can be written as x to the 1 third. Uh, the same thing. So that's what we just did here. Now, we don't want an exponent. We want a fraction. Right now we still have an exponential function, okay? A complicated one for that matter. So what you want to do is rewrite this expression so that it is a fraction. You just want a fraction. Now, every time there's an exponential function, you want to take the natural log of it, okay? So if you take the natural log of it, it makes your life a lot easier. But if you take the natural log, you have to undo the natural log you just did. Otherwise, you're changing the value or you're changing the, the question, okay? So we can say this is the same thing as the limit, okay? The limit as x approaches infinity of, if you take the natural log of this expression, you still have to take the e of it. Now, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna express this in terms of e and then take the natural log of it, okay, of x to the one x. Oh. See, these two will cancel each other out and you still have what you have originally, but this just makes your life a lot easier. This is a trick you have to employ. Take the natural log, take the e of it immediately, and then you have you still have this back. This is from the laws of logarithms and exponential interactions. Okay, yeah. So here we go. Now we've got this. If you do this, 
what you have eventually is the limit as x goes to infinity of, you see this 1 over x can come down here, it's going to be e to the 1 over x natural log of x. Because this can still go back and it can get back your expression. So I haven't really changed anything. I just rewrote it in a way that makes sense. Now this is where you need to remember some of the principles of um, limits, some of the limit laws that you know. Okay. Now because you're taking a limit of an expression and this is a constant, this limit is only affecting the portion that contains x. So I can actually rewrite this expression to be, let's go top, 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 here. This expression, I can rewrite it as this. This is e raised to the limit as x goes to infinity of this expression, 1 over x of ln of x. Do you see that? So I have moved this limit in here. Well, I tell myself that the limit of a function is the function of the limit. Okay, I just say that so I can always remember. The limit of a function is the function of the limit. As long as in the limit that you have, that is not um, affecting anything, okay? So what you're gonna do now is just simplify this. Take this limit, I'm sure you've seen this before. This is e to the limit as x goes to infinity of, this is the natural log of x divided by x. Okay, now, this actually is more or less an infinity over infinity case because as x goes to infinity, ln of x goes to infinity. That's certain, okay? And as x goes to infinity, x goes to infinity. So this is an infinity over infinity case. So L'Hopital's rule will work here, okay? However, you can also observe that as the natural log of x, as x gets bigger, yes, this is increasing, but it's increasing at a slower rate compared to x. Therefore, as this gets bigger, this also gets bigger, but because this is getting bigger faster than this, it's gonna go to zero, okay? If the numerator appears to be smaller compared to the denominator, as the denominator gets larger and larger, the expression goes to zero. So this expression goes to zero. However, you could apply L'Hopital's rule. Take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, and we're gonna have, okay, let's apply. So. Um, L'Hopital's rule, let's do L'Hopital's rule here. This is going to be e to the, no, we'll put L'Hopital's there. Um, I'm just going to put it here. Just know you can apply L'Hopital's rule to this expression, e to the limit as x goes to infinity. If you differentiate the top part, you're going to get 1 over x. If you differentiate the bottom, you're going to get 1. Okay, so this is the same thing as e to the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x. Now this is more obvious, okay, because as this is more obvious, you've applied L'Hopital's rule here, you've differentiated at the top and the bottom, as x goes to infinity, this expression goes to 0. So this is e to 0, which is equal to 1. Just as we predicted that it's going to go to 1 based on that trial and error that we did before. Okay. I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, give it a share, give it a like, give it a nice comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.